Welcome to the Conscious Pivot Podcast with international speaker, business mentor, best-selling author of Pivot, and your host, Adam Markell. The Conscious Pivot shares the stories and wisdom of people who have successfully reinvented some area of their business and personal life. You'll gain powerful insights into how you can fully embrace new opportunities, increase your performance, and master the art and science of innovation and resilience. So please join Adam as he guides you on your Conscious Pivot. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Conscious Pivot Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Markell, and I am feeling very grateful in this moment. So blessed that it is a, uh, it's a new day and new days have lots of incredible things, right? Sometimes it's sunny and everything's going your way and some days not so sunny and not everything's going your way. Um, and, and it's kind of a funny thing because I find that sometimes my energy, you know, if, if, if it's again, one of those days where there's more challenges than normal or new challenges or things I didn't expect, then I kind of find myself leaning in that direction of being, ah, oh, you know, this isn't so great, and I'm not so happy in this moment, and, and that kind of thing, and see my mood change. Uh, and I think that's the case for most everybody. But I have a reminder for myself. I have a, a tool, I guess, which always brings me back to something that feels more truthful. And that is that by taking a deep breath even when I'm feeling stressed and appreciating the fact that I'm able to take that deep breath, whereas there are lots of people that would like to and can't or didn't, didn't get up this morning, didn't, didn't make it from yesterday to today kind of thing. Um, I'm able to get back to a place that, that feels truthful to me. And that is that it's all a blessing. So despite challenge or whether it's rainy or it's sunny or, or things go in my way or not, this moment is special. So I would love to collectively, as we all are listening to this right now, take a deep breath together and appreciate our lives in this moment. Appreciate anything and everything that's going on as being perfect and required and, and a blessing, a gift, really. So um, thank you for doing that. Thank you for taking that breath. What a incredible thing it is just to be able to breathe together. Uh, just, just the image of that makes me smile. Um, so those of you watching on YouTube, you can see I am smiling ear to ear. And those of you who are listening, you can just imagine what a big smile for me looks like. So uh, I've got a, a great guest for all of you today. We're going to talk about marketing, which is near and dear to all of our hearts. Anybody in business, any entrepreneurs, even if you're in a job uh, working for somebody else, marketing is such a big, big deal. And this person has had many iterations uh, in his in his marketing experience and, and career and a very interesting life. Some of those pivot stories he's going to share with us today. His name is Dan Moyle. And I'll say a little bit about him, read his bio, and then we're going to get right into things. So Dan Moyle prefers and promotes helpful, engaging marketing over interruptive advertising. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Coming to marketing from the TV news business, Dan brings a wealth of knowledge from writing to video production to multimedia content creation. He says... I'd rather help someone reach 50 ideal customers than 5,000 passive viewers. Sometimes we call those voyeurs. There's a lot of that out there right now. As the inbound evangelist, Dan spreads the word about helpful integrated marketing to help businesses grow. Content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, search engine results, video marketing, and podcast interview marketing all fall into Dan's inbound strategy. Also a believer in servant leadership. Dan has worked behind the scenes at work with organizations like Honor Flight, Habitat for Humanity, Waterfront Film Festival, and Cap Nap Lodge, a kitten rescue, serving and lifting others up with respect and a strong work ethic. It is a blessing and a privilege to have you on the show today, Dan. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Adam. That's, that's awesome. I love the idea of taking that breath and being grateful for it. That's uh, such an incredible picture of the listeners and also just a great way to start the day, man. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that. Way cool. Way cool. Hey, this is a beautiful bio. I loved reading it. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot in here that, uh, or a lot that's not in here that you'd love people to know about you. What's one thing that's not written in this bio that you'd like folks to know? Uh, I, that, that's all the professional stuff, right? That's been my career. That's what I do for a living, but really who I am at my heart is a, a family guy, um, of a blended family. I'm a husband and dad of two girls and, uh, just love life. And it's such a beautiful thing to be able to, to interact with other people and do stuff in life and take care of my family. So that's, I mean, that's really who I am at my core is I'm a, I'm a, a husband and a blended family dad. 
Yeah. Well, it's, it's so interesting because there's never, I, I don't ever believe there's an accident. There's no accidents in the universe. So mm -hmm. if the people who are attracted to our, our community are people who love life. I mean, if you don't love life or you're not willing to be <laughs> somehow <laughs> prodded <laughs> and convinced to love your life somehow, then our, our messages are going to resonate uh, yeah. with many people. So thanks, yeah. thanks for bringing that to the table. And uh, what's one thing right now that you are grateful for? Uh, I am great. I am grateful for spring. Uh, I'm in Southwest Michigan and it feels like winter just Ooh. never wanted to let go. So, so today I'm grateful for spring cause I'm also, uh, not in the bio there. I'm a biker. So I love my motorcycle and, uh, riding as much as I can. So it's been a good, about a two week stretch here of riding quite a bit. So without, without getting any, any frost bite or whatever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't, have to, don't have to wear bite. everything. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Uh, cool. Dan. So let's dig into some of the the essence of what you're up to and how you've pivoted in your, in your business career. I think folks are, are fascinated by the topic of marketing. Uh, I think they're also frustrated in many ways because it's changing so quickly. And there's a lot of folks that are, are I think, wanting to do better at it and don't exactly know how. So I'd love for us to create some, some actionable things for people that potentially they can do differently in their marketing or new ways to look at it, kind of pivot their, their mindset around marketing and, and all yeah. that kind of thing. So yeah, lead us in if you could. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I think to, to me, you know, marketing becomes, it's become this great big thing that everybody wants to talk about. It's pretty popular right now, which is nice. I don't know if it's because of Mad Men, the show or what it is, but uh, marketing's become a bit of a, of a topic that everybody seems to be talking about. And and, it, and it's, there's like this alchemy behind the scenes that some people don't want you to see, right? It's, well, we're going we're gonna to magically bring you customers and blah, blah, blah. And really, I think that's kind of a bunch of BS, honestly. I mean, I think the, the thing about marketing to me is, because I'm a simple guy, um, it's, a, it's a simple idea of starting a conversation with your ideal customer. And I, and I steal that a little bit from um, Tom Schwab, the founder of Interview Valet. He says that quite a bit. And, and I've come to believe that in that nice, concise package of, that's what marketing is. I've always kind of thought that, but that package is really his, his thing. So I like that idea though. It's a, it's a beginning of conversation with your ideal customer. And so where, how do you do that is what we start to think about. You know, the strategy comes into play when you think about who your buyers are, who your ideal people are that you want to talk to um, because where are they hanging out, right? How, where are they? How do you reach them? What do they want to know? Um, it's not just trying to create the next, you know, uh, Tesla commercial, like, you know, Elon Musk has a great product. So that's, that's sexy to be able to market a Tesla. Right. Um, but if, if we, if most of us, 99% of us don't have a business that's quite that, um, quite that shiny and new and beautiful. Right. So what do we do? Well, if we just help others and have that conversation with them, that's so much better. So I, I like the idea of helpful rather than trying to, wow people and convince them if I just help enough people I mean Zig Ziglar said it you, if you want to if you want to get what you want you, you help more people get what they want right a rising tide lifts all boats so that to me is the idea of, of like inbound marketing is helpful yes and in our our language and Tom and I we had a conversation about this some time ago that was uh, very aligned we talk about relationships that we we focus on not trying to close people into a deal, you know, not closing sales, but opening relationships, closing, if we're going to close anything, we want to close the gap between us. So to create that connection, to create that relationship and, and you're using that word conversation. So start a conversation with your ideal client or your ideal customer. I think that's a, a great running definition for the purpose of marketing. So now people will say, well, great. Let's, let's assume that we're on board with that, that we want to start that conversation. What are, what are some of the, the ways in which people can do that? Or do you see people doing it in the wrong way? Are you seeing things in the marketplace that disturb you, that you think people are wasting their time, wasting their money, or being misled by some of the you know, self-proclaimed marketing gurus out there that are you know, using terms like funnels and uh, you know, tripwires and lead magnets and all this kind of language, which feels manipulative and frankly is on mm -hmm. some level manipulative. It's certainly not transparent. So yeah, uh, yeah. what's, what, any thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, you know, talk about things like offers and calls to actions and lead magnet. I don't, I don't, I don't use the word, the term lead magnet, but, but I get it. 
you want to you want to bring people to you. You want to magnetize what you have to bring them to you. I like how um, HubSpot, the the marketing and sales and communication software uh, company, they they look at it as a magnet. And every piece of content you put out there draws people in. So I do like the idea of that. But you're right, Adam. It's it feels if I'm trying to trick people into doing business with me, that's not the right way to do it. So you know things like uh, you know like like lead magnets and tripwires and pop ups and all these things. I I don't like those. What I like is um, bringing people to you with that with that engaging content when they're ready. So and, and so you know for me, especially in the, dig, the digital realm it goes back to things like SEO. You know, if I'm going to go searching, whether I'm asking for a recommendation on Facebook and I want people to, I want people to easily be able to share my brand, whatever that is. uh, I have to make sure that I, that I'm on Facebook then, right? I have a company page and I've got a little bit of a reach and I talk about it as the, as the executive of interview LA or as a founder of a company or as the, 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 the evangelist of, of a, of a brand. Um, I need to be able to talk about it personally because of my business page isn't going to reach enough people. I know that, but you have to have a business page. Then people make that recommendation. You're there or an SEO, you know, you've got to make sure that, you know, search engine optimization is all dialed in technically so that people can find you when they're ready. And, and I've heard this kind of talked about in the last, you know, six months or so of, well, but SEO is just, you know, marketing's job isn't to be there when they're ready. It's to convince them before they even know that you're there. And I, and I just, I don't like that. I don't think that that's the case because that feels more like spam to me, you know, especially as a consumer myself. I mean, we're all consumers besides entrepreneurs and, and executives, right? Uh, and, and business people, we're consumers too. And so as a consumer, if I don't think that I have a certain problem that needs to be solved, but I get an email or I get a, an ad somewhere or I drive by a billboard, let's say, and I see something that doesn't speak to me, that's just noise. I don't need more noise in my life. But as I'm, let's say, listening to a podcast that I, that I, you know, some, something like Conscious Pivot, let's say, and, and you're talking to somebody about a specific need that I have, and I'm thinking, man, I, I want to hear more from that person. Well, now all of a sudden I'm listening on a conversation, and as the business person that's there, I'm reaching people who are ready. And so to me, that's a much better way to operate in marketing and business than to, to do those other things that just kind of try and interrupt people's days. It's, it's attraction versus force. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's a very different energy to begin with that you're not in the convincing. I mean, I think that to be in the convincing business is an awful business to be in. <laughs> I was a yeah. lawyer for 18 years. So, um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get paid a lot of money to spend your time as a professional convincer, <laughs> you know, arguing basically all the time yeah. for something. Uh, and I gave yeah. up doing that, but, uh, but yeah, so so I think for folks that are listening to this, don't you don't need to be coming from a place necessarily of of wanting to trap or or track and trap your prey. Uh, that's not what marketing is about. It's really about how it is that you you position your service or your product in the world so that people who are ready and and are wanting to access that tool, access that solution, can do it easily. Right? Just don't make it difficult for them. Make it easy yeah. for them to find it. Make it easy for them to, to find out about it, which is in part, I think, what is great about podcasting as an example. And you mentioned SEO. Um, I, I don't know that we're doing everything uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the best way possible because if I said that, then there'd be no room for us to grow. But one thing I think we are doing well is taking every podcast and using it for SEO purposes. And anybody can do this. I mean, you just basically are transcribing your, your podcast, turning it into a blog that's at least, you know, we, we, I don't know if it's an arbitrary number, but for us, it's usually 1,200 words or more, which is something that we've, we've been told is a good number in terms of what will attract, uh, you know, what will give us credibility and with search engines. And that, uh, that, that SEO quality is, I mean, the, the lift in terms of those keywords and keyword phrases and things like that are actually really valuable to the domain authority of a, of a website. So it's good for business to cascade these messages. So through the podcast itself, but then through a blog and through other things. So is that, I'm asking you, does that seem like a, a good strategy for most people to be doing if they haven't gotten a podcast, or if they are podcasting, but are not using it for SEO purposes? Do you recommend that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can see, you know, if you're going to start a podcast, um, 
you know, and here's one of the things too, Adam, I'll back up for a second. When a client comes to us, they don't always have a podcast and that's fine because we tell them, look, don't start a podcast just yet because we know, I know how much work goes into this for you, Adam. I know that you've got a team, you put in a lot of hours. This is a, a passion thing for you. It takes yeah. a lot of work. Anybody who says it's easy either hasn't done it or, done it or hasn't done it well. And so, um, so we tell our clients, don't start one yet, go be a guest. And then you can start one eventually if you want. But on either side of that, though, of that coin, taking that experience and turning it into a blog article, uh, maybe multiple blog articles. You know, you may be on a podcast that has two different subjects or something like that, and you can split it into two articles, but at, but at least one. And then you can take quotes out of that and create social media memes. Um, there are softwares, diff different software companies, uh, Audiogram is one of them that I've heard of that you can take and create a, an audio snippet. We use Audiogram. Okay. Very, yeah. Yeah. I mean, very cool stuff. Exactly. You take yeah. an audio snippet out of that podcast and, uh, and it puts together a meme that you throw up on social media and it's, it's, it's actually way cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Isn't it? So you, you, you yeah. use that, that central thing to create a web of marketing, a web of content that you can use again and again, you can repurpose, use differently. Um, you know, if you have an amazing interview, turn it into an infographic or a website, um, Everybody, it's funny because everybody says not another ebook. Please don't do another ebook. Please don't do like, we don't want more PDFs <laughs> in the world. Right. Um, so instead they're creating kind of more interactive web pages, right? More than a blog article, but a little bit different. And so you can do that. Um, gosh, you, there's so much you can do, you well, know, it's repurposing. And that, mm -hmm. that's what I really love about it. Use the word alchemy earlier. And to me, I, I love this. I love the term alchemy of turning, you know, turning something into something else, turning lead mm -hmm. into gold, but really what it means for me is that it's nothing goes to waste. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea that all of these things can be repurposed and used in various ways so that they don't go to waste. And not mm -hmm. only don't they go to waste, but they have multiple, you know, this, you get multiple uses out of them, multiple opportunities and through different platforms and channels to be able to cascade your message. So again, mm -hmm. people can find out what you're up to, what good work you're doing. And then when it meets them in that place where they go, yeah, I'd love, to. like there are people listening to this right now going, geez, I never really thought about a podcast this way um, and would love to find out. Mm -hmm. And we love this. We love working with people who are after that. We work with your company. <laughs> so when people want to get on podcasts, you know, interv interview valet is a great option for them to get on shows when they don't know how to begin getting on shows, for example. Uh, that kind of thing. So um, I think repurposing is, is, a, uh, is a beautiful pivot in and of itself. That, that this idea of how, to, how it is that we use things to evolve. Um, that's the pivot principle. And so what I'd love to do is, you've not been a marketer your whole life. I, I'm guessing you weren't, you weren't eight years old and, and marketing. So <laughs> I mean, I was telling a lot of stories back then. Different dream, but, right? You know. <laughs> different dream when you were eight. So <laughs> I want to, who knows? I mean, I'm waiting for somebody to say, yeah, I was, a, I was dreaming to be an internet marketer when I was eight years old. The truth is probably 10 years from now, we're going to find that there'll be 20 something and 30 something year olds who are killing it in the marketing space, who that's all they wanted to do when they were eight. In fact, there are, there are YouTubers out there, right? That have millions of, of subscribers and have millions of views on their YouTube channel uh, who've been doing it since they're like eight or nine or 10 years old. Isn't that right? Right. right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my, my youngest daughter wants to do that. She wants to, she's 12 right now and she wants to create a YouTube channel to, to show videos of her littlest pet shop stories or whatever, like a, 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 a young filmmaker, basically. <laughs> yeah. yep. you, you two celebrity, celebrity dumb. I can't yeah. say it, celebrity dumb. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so Dan, take us back to an earlier time in your life and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and give us the, the pivot, you know, the pivots that led you to the place that you're at now. Yeah. I, you know, like a lot of people, I think I started off in the, in the restaurant industry, 16 years old, busting tables, being a host, uh, eventually waiting tables and becoming an assistant manager. And, and I knew that wasn't gonna be my life. I mean, I wanted to do um, something in a, in a career rather than a job and, and, you know, God bless those who are, are doing that job. I mean, it's, it takes a lot to be a in the service industry. I knew that wasn't going to be my life. Wasn't going to be a restaurant. So I, my first pivot was to, realize that I needed to do something different. And I've got um, a huge passion for music. For anybody watching YouTube, you can see over my shoulder, I've got a bass guitar back there and a Jack Johnson poster. I love music, but I can't sing. <laughs> you don't want me to do that. I don't have a, a natural talent for playing any instruments. It would take a lot of work. So 
I knew that I couldn't play music or sing, but I wanted to be involved. So I've, I found a school over near Detroit, uh, Michigan, and it was for radio and TV broadcast arts, or now it's like a media arts school, whatever. But anyway, I thought, man, if I can get into radio, someday I can maybe produce records or I can, can make connections with, you know, artists or whatever. Like, this is going to be amazing. And the town that I'm in, uh, just outside of Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kalamazoo is halfway between Detroit and Chicago. So it used to be, we'd get a lot of acts through here and they'd be on the radio and stuff like that. So it all kind of made sense in my head. So I, I made the pivot from just being in a job to going to school to try and make a career out of it. That was my first real pivot. And I learned a ton at Spax Howard uh, School. Uh, I ended up getting a job in radio and one in TV and began to just kind of craft this life of what am I going to do? And unfortunately, my idea of getting the music industry through that that channel didn't work, which, you know, is the downside to pivots, right? We don't, that's not all success. So, um Radio in Kalamazoo at the time was starting to to not be quite as as thriving. Um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, is about an hour north of there, and they get all the acts now because they're a bigger city and have uh, better venues, I guess, right now. Um, so you know, I, I, Aerosmith wasn't coming through town, or you know, Kid Rock or somebody up and coming at the time. So I got into TV instead, and that that pivot then took me into journalism because I'm a writer at heart, and so I just started, you know working my way up from the bottom of a, of a PA, a production assistant, running scripts, teleprompters, cameras, whatever I could do to becoming a, a videotape editor and then an associate producer where I would edit and write. And then I became a producer where I was writing the newscast. So that was my, my two kind of back-to-back -back pivots that got me into this idea of writing and storytelling and, and media. Yeah. And it's a storytelling thing or a part of it that you're really in love with. Is that right? I mean, that's the... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think this is, this is an area that a lot of people don't even realize has value for you know, business value. They, they, love to, they love to tell stories or they have stories to tell and they don't know what to do with them and they're valuable, would you say? Oh, absolutely. And, and so often we just kind of think, well, my story must be my product, right? I'm going to tell you about my, my widget or my service right. or my product. And really the story is how does that help me as the possible consumer and tell me that story through the success of another customer. So let's play with this for just a second because you've become an, I'm going to use the word expert in the inbound marketing space. You've been doing it a lot of years and you, you've, you've spoken on some of the biggest stages around. In fact, before we hit the start button, you, you've spoken at the inbound marketing events, a massive event that's done once a year in Boston with HubSpot. You've spoken there two, three times, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, how is it that a person who has a story and is confusing, let's just say that they are confusing their storytelling with their product. How, what, what advice would you give them? Is there some way that they can utilize some of what you've learned, you know, give them something strategic and, and um, uh, actionable even in this moment? Yeah. Uh, think of yourself not as the hero of the story. Think of yourself as the, the person who's going to guide the hero. Um, and, and, I, and honestly, I mean, transparently, I steal that a little bit from Donald Miller, building a story brand. Um, great, great strategist right there, Donald Miller. And so, but, but I learned from him and from others, you can't think of yourself and your product as the hero. It, you are the guide. Um, if, if you are Luke Skywalker, then you're helping Ray. You're not the Luke Skywalker of the 70s movies. You're the new Luke Skywalker being that, that, guide to them. So you've got to kind of make that, that pivot to use your word, Adam, uh, make that pivot of you're not the hero. This isn't all about you. You know, founder stories can be cool, right? Like I, you know, I, I love, I love, I'm, I'm listening right now to Rand Fishkin's book, Lost and Founder. I love mm -hmm. his story, but that wasn't what got me to do business with the company to begin with. It was seeing myself as the hero that I knew their product could help me. Right. So that, and then eventually, you know, I became, much more interested in his, his story, but, but not, not right away. Like I, I don't necessarily care as I'm looking to be successful in my marketing and my SEO world. I don't necessarily care that he started his business with his mom 10 years before. Right. I, I want to know that they're going to help me find the links that I, that I need to bear down on. They're going to help me increase my SEO presence, you know, all these things. I, he positioned it so that I was going to be the hero by using their service. So that's the pivot you need to make. Yeah. It, and, and this is probably a radio station that a lot of people are familiar with already, um, but I'll say it anyway, WIIFM, right? We all know that one. 
what's mm-hmm. in it for me. And mm-hmm. that's the radio station that's playing it in people's heads all the time. And that's not a bad thing. That's just something to recognize that when you're telling your story, and let's just say that your marketing is your story. I mean, your, your conversation, as you said earlier, marketing is starting a conversation with your ideal customer. So that conversation, if that conversation is about me, 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 I, 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 uh, you've lost people. You've lost mm-hmm. them really quickly. So it's, it's something that we, when we work with speakers, so it's a separate, um, sort of a separate uh, 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 paradigm, but it's, it's related because all speaking is, is a form of marketing anyway. It's a form of conversation. If the conversation is about you, people will tune out. They'll be bored. They, you will not be effective at, having a, at seizing the opportunity in front of you to transform someone's life. So it's not about me is what we, we often are training our speakers to recognize that it's not about me. It's about we. It's about this connection. It's about bridging, bridging that gap or closing the gap between us and letting that, the, that audience and, and those listeners and the, the, the readers, if you will, uh, the people you're in conversation with know that you genuinely can care about them. And if you are, in fact, telling a story you have to check in and let them know that it is about them. Even though I'm, I'm sharing a piece of experience or wisdom or guidance, however it is, it's, it's embedded in my story, but the story is going to be for your benefit. So yep. ultimately, it's, it benefits them to, to be paying attention and leaning in and wanting to know more. Um, and that's, that's, a, um, you know, that's a really important distinction, so I appreciate that. And, uh, and Donald, Miller, Donald Miller, Building a Story Brand is a great book. So that's one of those ones that I think folks, have, uh, if you're out there, are ready to read a new book. And the other book you mentioned, Rand Fishkin, what's that book that you're reading? Lost and Founder, it's called. Okay. Don't know that one, so I'm yeah. It just it just came out pretty recently. Beautiful, yeah. Lost and and, and I found you know I mean I know we'll get to this later, but that's one of my uh one of one of my the things that I do every day, one of my traditions or whatever you call it, but um is to read. I mean that's that's the thing. Like the more stories you read and take in, the better storyteller I think you'll be in general. So, but well, Dan, you're uh, <laughs> you're anticipating perfectly my. Final question for you is with all of our guests, it's always about your rituals, the things that you do in a, in a, in a, a way that's very intentional, let's say, not necessarily no religious con- context for that, but, but it is sacred on some level because you do, them, you do them regularly and intentionally. What are some of those things that you do in that way to keep, keep you growing? Yeah, it's it read. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. And I, and I pretty recently started being very intentional about it. I, I've always been a, a reader, but I find myself in the last few years, you know, I get to the end of my day and I'm just, I'm tired or I'm checked out or I'm busy with my family or, you know, I want to go for a motorcycle ride or I want to play on my phone. That's my guilty pleasure is uh, phone games um, or texting people, or whatever, you know, social media, that kind of stuff. But I, I find myself not reading. I'm taking in media and, and stories and, and noise but I'm not being intentional about the reading. And I, and I've come to realize that, you know, uh, all leaders are readers. You know, I've heard that. And, um, and, and very successful CEOs, founders, um, executives of any kind. I mean, I'm, I'm a CMO, not a CEO, but they're, they read. So the more information you take in, the more ideas, the more you learn, it's just so vital. So I start every morning, I started getting up at 5am rather than sleeping until six, six 30. I get up at five o'clock. Get, I get out of bed, even if I don't want to. Um, I, I, you mentioned earlier that the ritual isn't a, a religious connotation, but I start with my faith. So I start with um, some Bible study and devotion mm. and prayer and just, and just meditation. If nothing else, meditation and just being grateful for that morning. Um, yes. That's, you know, a good 15 to 30 minutes. And then I grab a book. I've got a stack of books over here to my left of books that I'm borrowing or that I've bought or that I've been given that I want to get through in the next three months and I, and I want to read a book every week. And, you know, they're not long books. I mean, this is Obstacle is the Way from Ryan Holiday. And it's not an epic. You know, it's 150 pages or whatever, 200 pages. Um, so, it's not, so it's not unheard of to get through that in a week. Um, or as I'm, re- I'm reading that, if I, if I go out to mow my yard, I'm going to listen to a book on Audible. That's where I'm listening to Rand Fishkin. Yes. So I can take in these things. Um, 
that's one of my biggest rituals is to read every morning and then to find podcasts like conscious pivot to again, take in other information and ideas, opinions, strategies, whatever it is, rather than just entertainment. So. Yes. And, uh, it's not long ago, maybe in, within the last year or so, I'm, I'm friends with one of the co-founders of HubSpot. And I asked him, I said, well, how is it you're taking in content these days? And he, he, one of the two ways he mentioned was podcasts. So, mm-hmm. you know, podcasts are a great way to, to receive that information. I, like you, have a morning ritual where I get up and I have time for my, my stillness practice and my connection with, with, with source and with God mm-hmm. is the word I would use for myself. Um, and then I do want to look at you know, what what are the what are the other ways that I can build build the the, the bank <laughs> the brain bank um, and and the you know look we're all getting a little older each day so I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah. a little concerned about my my you know keeping my brain really really active and absorbing good stuff because you said earlier and I wrote this down that we're taking in a lot of noise and, you know getting on getting on our phones you know picking up the phone and following different threads in social media and articles and things like that is all good on some level. And yet when you said it, I kind of questioned to myself, how much time are people spending just absorbing noise, things that are interesting, but not necessarily uh, going to be useful to them in some way. And I, I believe that everything is connected and there's just art, the art and science of living successfully is about how you connect the dots so that you never see things as being random. You're never the victim of anything. It's always very much for our, for our development and growth, even though it, always, it doesn't always feel that way to us. And at the same time, I'm thinking there's also a lot of noise and how, how it is that we invite noise into our lives, which makes us busy and we might feel like we're productive or we feel like we're, we're productive because we're so busy and yet we're just really absorbing a lot of noise and not gaining a lot of clarity as a result of it. So Dan, I, I really appreciate the clarity of your message today and the, the way that you, you conveyed uh, that you were in conversation with myself and with our entire community. So thank you for being a guest on the show. It is a, a privilege. Uh, I really appreciate the time here on Conscious Pivot. It's been a lot of fun, man. Awesome. And uh, for everybody out there, of course, I want to leave you with a a few parting remarks as always. Um, Recommend that if you've enjoyed this podcast, please, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Leave us a comment too at adammarkell.com forward slash podcast, or you can leave a review on iTunes, which we so appreciate. Our Facebook community, for those of you that dig Facebook, not everybody does, but uh, that community is really thriving. It's called Start My Pivot Community on Facebook. You can get there. Shortcut URL is pivotfb.com. You can get there as well. Uh, You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter, all the usual places. But uh, I want to leave us in uh, in a place of gratitude as we began in gratitude. And the gratitude, my form of gratitude will take, take a, uh, will will be in a in a prayer and the prayer that I have for myself for all of you for all of your families for everybody who's listening to this and really for the whole world even though uh, we know this is this is not going to be the case but uh, for as far out as this this message will will uh, um, will go I wish and and hope and pray that everybody gets to wake up tomorrow we got to wake up today. That's how come you're, con- you're able to listen and watch this because you woke up. And it may have been an easy day and it may have been a difficult day. You know, it could be that you're, you're consuming this in, in a state where uh, right now it was just perfectly timed. I always kind of find that when I listen to something or read something, it's perfectly timed. So hopefully this was perfectly timed for you. But either way, my, my gratitude is in advance that we get to wake up again tomorrow. And that when we do wake up again tomorrow, that's step one. Step two is that we're aware, a little more aware and a little more awake tomorrow than we are today. So it's a metaphor as well as the physical waking. And in that moment that we realize we've been given another day, that there is another assignment for us, at least for that day, that we're grateful for it. We're grateful for that opportunity that we are willing to receive that gratitude and receive the challenge of the day and the opportunity to expand and develop abilities that are equal to that opportunity that lies ahead. So that's step two, be in gratitude. And and step three, if you're willing to say it out loud from your bed or when your feet hit the floor, you can say these words, I love my life. 
I love my life. I love my life. Till we, we come across each other again, I'll say ciao for now. Have a blessed and a beautiful day. Dan, again, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. My, pl- my pleasure. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening, everyone. We hope you now have the tools and greater insights to navigate your own pivot. Help us inspire others by sharing this episode and leaving your comments over at adammarkeld.com forward slash podcasts. For more tips, strategies, and support as you consciously pivot into a new business and lifestyle you love, join our Pivot community on Facebook at pivotfb.com.